In this chapter, we're going to take a real-world example and recreate it. You'll learn how to load vector assets from Sketch, Figma, and Illustrator. And we'll dig into the details of creating micro-interactions, like a favorite heart, a switch, or a button that changes a setting. Welcome back. Now that you know how to install After Effects, install the Lottie Files plugin, and you have a good understanding of Lottie Files and what it does, we're going to look at three example animations and how to recreate them in After Effects from scratch. That way you can see the workflow of creating animations for Lottie. The first one we're going to do is this favorite heart. The second one we're going to do is this material design spinner. And then the last one we're going to do is this hamburger menu to arrow. These are really simple animations to do in After Effects and Lottie handles this kind of stuff really well. Now, before we animate anything, we're going to go over how to import assets. We'll go over how to import from Illustrator, how to import from Sketch, and how to import from Figma. First, let's do Illustrator. Let me close these up. And I have a folder here that has this heart. We'll start out with the heart. And there's an old school way and a new school way. So the old school way is to save your artwork as an Illustrator file and drag it in After Effects. So I'll go back to here. I'll go back to After Effects and just drag this file right on in. At this point, you just have an Illustrator file in your project and you can't do anything unless you create a comp. So what you could do is go file new composition and name it heart and then drag your heart in and it would be tiny. The other thing you can do, let's go back here. The other thing you can do is take this heart and drag it right down here onto this composition icon. And let me show you what this icon looks like. It's like a little blue circle, green triangle, red box, create new composition. And what that does is it creates a new composition with the exact size of the asset that you brought it in. So if you're working and bringing your assets in and the assets are 1x, your comp will be 1x. Now I'm going to open up the composition settings just to check everything. Sometimes depending on what you've been working on, your frame rate might be off. So it's always a good idea to check your composition settings before you start animating. I'm going to change this to 10 seconds, actually two seconds. Now that you have a layer in here, there's a problem because it's an illustrated layer. And what we talked about in one of the other videos is that Lottie really relies on vector data. And if this is an illustrator, it has no vector data for us to export. It's looking at this like it's an image. What you need to do is create vector data from this illustrator file. And the way you do that is control click the layer, go to create shapes from vector layer. When you do that, you can see it creates a shape layer that looks exactly the same as the Illustrator file. Now, if we had a bunch of complicated patterns in our file with gradients and all this stuff, things can get a little funky when you convert to shape. So it is best to do with simple shapes, but it's always worth a try, even if you think it might be too complicated. But again, I'm kind of showing you the old school way to bring in assets from Illustrator. I'm gonna show you this time the new school way. It's using this tool called Overlord. It's a tool created by a company called Battleaxe, which is Adam Plouffe's tool. So if you Google Battleaxe Overlord, then it brings up the Battleaxe website and you can download it from here. And what this amazing tool does is it allows you to send vector assets directly from Illustrator right into After Effects. I'll show you how it works. You select this layer and if you've installed it, it should live up here in Window, Extensions, Overlord. It also lives in After Effects in Window, Extensions, Overlord. You need to have both of them open in order for this to work. If Overlord's closed in After Effects and you try to send something over, it's not gonna work. So once they're both open, you select everything and you hit this, push selection to AE. Boom, there it is. It's really like magic. You can send things from Illustrator to After Effects and from After Effects to Illustrator. It's just amazing. 
Now let's start animating from here. Or wait, before we actually start animating, usually I like to do a little bit of cleanup. So I'm gonna open up this and just make sure that there's only a path and only a fill. One thing you'll notice about the old school way here is when you open up the contents, you have this group which has a path and another path and a merge path and a fill. Oftentimes when you're creating shapes from Illustrator layers, you get a bunch of junk you don't need. So just as an example, if we were using this layer, we would have to come in here and this here is the path for the heart. This is bounding box, which we don't need. And this is merge paths. Merge paths is not even supported on certain versions of Lottie, so we're gonna delete that first. And now that we have this bounding box path, it's kind of filling in the whole thing, so we will delete that. Now if you have a really complicated illustration, importing it from Illustrator and getting all this junk and having to clean it up can be time consuming. Luckily, Overlord does a pretty good job of removing all that stuff when you use it. So I'm just gonna delete this stuff, name this heart, Turn it on, save. I haven't saved yet. Make sure you're always saving. Heart, and we're good to go. Now one thing I'm gonna do is try to make my timeline a little bigger. I'm gonna turn off these panels here. Sometimes when I'm working, I'm just constantly turning on and off panels to get more room, to get different panels that have different features I need, depending on what I'm working on. I'm gonna set, what I just did is press S. What S does is reveals the scale property on any layers that you have selected. There's a bunch of key commands for all the different properties, such as T for opacity, P for position, R for rotation, and using those key commands can help you reveal those properties so you don't have to keep twirling down this little arrow to find them. So we're gonna start with scale. I'm gonna move up here, put a keyframe here, I wanna, I know I want this thing to, see now I forgot a panel. I need my switches. So now I'm going to scale this down because I wanted to do this little recoil. It's kind of one of the things we talked about in the principles was doing anticipatory moves to give some anticipation. Then I'm gonna scale it up even bigger, which made me realize my comp size is too small. So let me press Command K, open up my comp size. I'm just gonna do 40 and 40. Now I'm going to scale this. So now I get it going whoop whoop, and now I need to copy and paste this last keyframe here from here to here. So I'm actually gonna make this work area a little bit tighter just so I can see the art, the heart animation, just so I can see the heart animation itself. And then let's play it. Not very exciting, right? Let's tighten this up. So I'm gonna make this actually bigger. I'm gonna drag these keyframes closer. I wanna make this way tighter and snappier. Getting better. Drag these keyframes. I wanna make it even closer. Now I don't normally do this, but what I'm gonna do for the sake of this video is I'm gonna select all the keyframes. I'm gonna control click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Right off the bat, it's kind of better, but it's still kind of weird. So now I'm gonna take it even a step further, which is go to the graph editor. It's this little icon here and I'm gonna start to massage all of these keyframes. This little thing here is kind of getting in my way, so I'm gonna move this, visualize. You all can watch me move this, you don't mind, right? I'm just gonna move it over here. Okay, so now I'm gonna finesse some of these keyframes to get the motion I want. I'm going to keep Adjusting this one and this one. And you can see this is kind of where the rubber meets the road and this is actually where the fun is. Massaging all these keyframes, 
getting them to be in the exact right timing and the exact right curve so that you get the effect you want. Actually, I think I want this to, to kind of zoom in here really quick and then fly up to big and then zoom back down. Mm, that's kind of it, but not really. I won't put you all through this torture much longer. I'm going to come to a decision in what I want. As you all can probably imagine, a reality show about animators would be pretty boring, just moving keyframes around all day. But I like it. It's fun. As you can see, I spend quite a bunch of time trying to get exactly what I want. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to go with that. So I have a comp I'm happy with. I'm going to trim my composition so it's a pretty good length. The way you can trim this is this gray area here. You control click it, trim comp to work area. That makes your comp length the exact size of the work area within that gray box. So now let's get this thing in the Lottie files. Window, extensions, Lottie files already open. So now I got my heart here. I'm going to hit this arrow. And now we have our preview. The last thing you do, as you already know, you hit upload. It uploads it to Lottie files. And now you have your link. All right. So I'm going to go back here and close this Lottie files because I don't want that using up any of my CPU while I'm working. And so that is the simplest animation we could possibly ever look at because it's one animated property, it's four keyframes, and that really gets you going on the basics.